Okay, this is a uh, my KTM 525 Enduro that's been converted to a supermoto. Um, if most of you have probably been or following on the supermoto forum, uh, it's taken a lot longer than I expected uh, due to the fact that it's been completely rewired. So this isn't really sort of reverse or cut or anything. So anyway, right. So uh, essentially, most of the wiring loom is gone. Um, and it's been replaced with mainly motor gadget kit, which are over in Germany. So if I sort of point out the main things, which are uh, obviously the main thing is the M unit, which is there, which controls pretty well most of the bike. Um, now, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess and it's not really finished yet. But seeing as everyone's probably been hanging on for the last 18 months as I have, um, I thought I'd just do a quick video just to prove that it actually does all work, kind of. Um, I do have a problem with the clocks at the moment where they do power up but when the bike's been running for a bit they cut out which we haven't really got to the bottom of yet but that's the next thing to overcome so um, as I say main parts there are the M unit then there's the clocks there which are the motor gadget clocks um, and then down just there is a thing called the M button and that controls the switch gear which is here and here which have been replaced so this is the motor gadget switch gear um, that all wires to the M button which is here and then one wire literally travels from there all the way down to the M unit which then the M unit controls um, the stock things are the CDI is the same uh, the stator is the same down the bottom um, and it's all been rewired with PTFE stainless steel cord wire which is this stuff here which um, is pretty well everything proof. Uh, so if it sort of managed to get near the engine or something like that, it wouldn't melt. Uh, so anyway, that's the main point of that. Um, the whole bike has been stripped down completely back to the frame. So everything has been powder coated. Um, all bearings have been replaced. The engine has been completely rebuilt from the ground upwards, along with all the other internal upgrades that come with it because uh, there is some rehashed parts. Um, the engine is uh, has been recoated in a thing in a, a, a coating called Xylan. So this isn't the standard engine coating of the engine. This is a Xylan coating which apparently, so I'm told, is everything proof. So it's resistant to salt, anything from the road, um, pretty well anything. It's used in oil rig applications um, most of the time, which goes to show how resistant it is. Um, but obviously time will tell. So anyway, there you go. Um, that's about it. It's got XL rims on it. Um, XL rim on the front. The front forks are from a 640. Um, so it's a 640 set of front end on it. Um, as you can see, obviously the, the disc, the, the caliper there is a bit different, obviously because it's from the Supermoto itself. Uh, again, the Brembo down there has been recoated in Xylan again as well. I do have a bit of a problem with air in the line, but there you go. I haven't fixed that yet. Um, and the light, obviously, from the front is from a 2013 model. Um, uh, this case in here again is coated in Xylan, but it's a slightly different colour. Um, and the other things that I haven't had done yet, because obviously I can't ride the thing yet, because it's uh, sawned at the moment is the shock has to be stripped down and the height has to be adjusted but apparently the best way to do it is to strip it down um, and then once it's stripped down and it's been rebuilt apparently at that point there that's where the shock's lowered so the white power guy tells me so that's yet to come which obviously will drop the back end down a bit um, there's probably a little view from inside that there is pretty well most of the wiring um, I haven't actually waterproofed it yet, uh, as in covered it up, but it is waterproof in itself, but obviously it'd just be a bit bit of a tidier job. So anyway, um, the other thing actually that it's got as well is it's got, um, there's an alarm built into the M unit and also as well, there is no ignition, but there is an ignition, which is done with this tag here. Um, the M lock sensor, all you have to do is just pass it near. So if I just sort of film the two parts as it sort of boots up is you'll see pass that down there and there you go so that's the M unit powered up 
Now what I'll do is I'll power it off again because the clocks obviously have got their own power up sequence as well. So if I hold that up there and then do the same thing again. And that's the clocks there. So without further ado, I'll have a go at starting it. It hasn't been run yet actually on the road. So the engine's a bit, a bit lumpy at the moment after it's been rebuilt. Um, but anyway, this is kind of a bit unrehearsed, but let's see if it starts. Now, if and when it does start and it runs, the clocks probably will cut out, but let's see what happens. Anyway, and we're off. stayed on that time anyway, there you go um, so it starts it runs and it works but obviously you've not really had the chance to get on it yet um, because it actually has to be in for MOT but there you go the clocks look pretty cool when they're going um, let's try that again actually oh. and again That's what the clocks do. So uh, if you power it off and then power it up again, the clocks will come back on. Uh, so ignition off and then back on again. Hopefully. Oh no. So off. On again. And there you go. So there you have it. Um, I'll post up another video when it's actually on the road um, from a sort of performance point of view and how it goes. But obviously, it's not really a tuned engine. Um, it's pretty well standard. But uh, one of the lads on the KTM forum uh, did advise me that when the engine was apart in pieces, that um, there were some upgraded internal parts which have also gone into it, which you know wouldn't have been worth doing otherwise. So anyway, there you go. Um, more videos to come, hopefully, when it's running. <laughs>